Good evening. It is Thursday, October the 6th. It's about 6 o'clock p.m. This is meteorologist Shay Gibson with Leading Edge Weather and Sail Flow bringing you a forecast, uh, not the final forecast. That'll be tomorrow night at the skipper's meeting, but um, another update from last night's initial forecast. So we'll go ahead and um, look at, put me down here in the corner, take a look at the splash page for the Cora page here, and you can, you can still register for this race if it's not too late. Uh, get your uh, registration in now. And you come to this page, go to Skipper's Information, Offshore Wind and Weather, and that's where you can find the forecast here. But all your SIs and everything are here on this page. So uh, let's go ahead and jump right into the weather. All right, so here is the surface map. This is for Friday afternoon. I wanted to kind of show you the progression. We have a pair of cold fronts heading towards the coastline. Luckily, not, not, not really any moisture associated with it. These are going to be rather dry cold fronts that are going to be moving into the area. There's just not a lot of deep tap enough to pull the Gulf moisture up along it. Uh, with a dry air mass that's currently in place so uh, we'll continue to be dry we'll see a few clouds with this as we get into saturday morning but uh, very little rain if any we may get a little bit of thickening with a sprinkler too early and then likely clearing out as this front uh, hangs up and then eventually pushes offshore the issue though is uh, whereas a few days ago we were looking at a fairly moderate to strong northeast wind making it down this continental high pressure out in the midwest uh, is, is far even farther west today than it was yesterday. Originally, we had this high here. It was a very large dome that was going to really be cranking the gradient down along the coastline. However, now we see that the timing of the front slows down. It wants to park along our coast or slow down on its approach. The other cold front behind it falls apart or it conjoins with it, either one. We get a little kink of low pressure along the coast, slow to kind of nudge out off the sea as that high pressure out west nudges it farther out. And then there you go. So by Saturday afternoon, we start to see that northeast bite coming in down behind the front. But the front is, does remain close, which means the gradient remains rather light and kind of variable up until at least early afternoon when that northeast wind starts to come in. So this map doesn't really get in high resolution uh, after 12Z Saturday. It goes right into the midnight hour. So it goes in 12-hour increments. But you can see in the Sunday that high really expands up and over the tidewater and outer banks area. It was a little higher earlier in some of the forecast runs where this high was up here and then this high was over Missouri and this was going to be creating an, a moderate gradient a stronger gradient on the coast into Sunday now we're seeing that high is actually closer to the Carolinas the central area which makes the winds a little bit weaker overall so we're looking at modest to somewhat moderate winds on Sunday but the real question here is Saturday at the race start what are we looking at and we'll get to the winds in just a minute I just wanted to show you the surface map what to expect as we get into Sunday and even in the, into um, Sunday night and into Monday. That high is going to park up to the north and give us some modest easterlies into Monday. But uh, we'll let, take a quick look at the currents when you leave. There, We will be on an ebb tide at minus 2.75 is the speed. The current prediction out by Fort Sumter, and this is from the NOAA Tides and Currents. So 11.06 a.m. is the max ebb at minus 2.75. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there for the racers trying to get out of the harbor on some light westerly winds. Uh, we'll get into the winds momentarily, but I just wanted to tell you what the max up was at minus 2.75. Let's take a look at the near shore wave prediction system just to take a quick peek at the swells and heights. So we'll take uh, buoy 41076. That's roughly 18 miles out. Uh, this one is probably the closest one we can get. So we look at a uh, short period Wind swell in the seven to eight second period as we get into Saturday morning, maybe even nine seconds at right around 1.5 to two feet ish. So not much going on there. It starts out really mellow out in the uh, open waters beyond five nautical miles. And then we see as we get into Sunday, there's a sharp drop off in the period going down to around four or five seconds with the winds. I'm sorry, the waves actually kind of backing more from the northeast. So. Just remember, Sunday could get a little bit bumpy out there as you're trying to head back up the coast, but it looks like the winds may be trying to veer a little more easterly as well, which that'll be of some help. But do notice that the swell heights will be going up Sunday at, up into the 3.5 to 4 foot range uh, by late Sunday afternoon. So if you're coming back from Rockville, uh, you're going to see an increase in waves over time as that northeast, east, northeast wedge settles that swell, kind of builds the swell down the coastline and reaches us by Sunday morning you start to see that increase by the race time start at 10 o'clock. So that's kind of what the, the swell heights are looking like. If we look at GFS for winds, trying to get an exact timing of this is, is really difficult, especially with GFS and Euro modeling. But uh, tomorrow I'll be looking at the higher resolution models to find out timing of that wind. 
uh, it tends to the northeast winds tend to sort of break through the cold front so the models want to hang on to that cold front to keep things variable whereas i know i'm pretty sure those northerly winds will kind of push through a little earlier than anticipated simply because that surface flow is going to be stronger than what's going on with the cold front that's parked nearby but as we get into saturday morning this is about 11 o'clock a.m so we go back four uh, hours from the utc time here and we can see that the gfs is starting to show that northerly flow pushing down slowly but surely but about mid-afternoon is when it starts to arrive and it's real light so they're, they're keeping it at about the eight to ten knot ranges um, i tend to think a little higher but we're going to go with this for gfs for now and then overnight as we go through the night the winds will be picking up and creeping down the coastline especially offshore first the model might not be reading the gradient correct on this but uh, so it's pretty steady winds as we get into Sunday. So east, northeast to east winds and sun all day Sunday, starting at probably three or four in the morning is when you're going to start to see the max speeds uh, come into the area. Here's the Euro. And we're, this is 11 o'clock a.m. Saturday is 7 a.m. And we keep going out farther. The Euro brings the northerly winds in a little sooner. So you see this is two o'clock where we start to see a north flow, north, northeast flow starting to kind of move down across the area. We get into 11 o'clock a.m. We see seven, eight, nine, ten knots, maybe, and then and then, then the euro brings it in just like the GFS. So a lot of agreement there, where the gradient kind of creeps down the coastline in time as we go overnight Saturday into Sunday morning. So let's look at the the surface map here with all of our weather stations. I'm just going to pick. I'll pick the Charleston Harbor front Fort Sumter Front Range light just for a perspective here, and, uh, and I'm going to run all the models. So we'll get through Saturday morning, then we'll go offshore to a buoy to find another point forecast. So there's a lot, and you know, some of the higher resolution models are starting to show up here. So even the HRRR, the NAM3 is coming out through Saturday, uh, and we see 6 a.m. We see a west, basically a west or west-southwest start uh, as the sun rises, and then we we are probably going to be maintaining about a five to nine knot range right at the you know uh, seven o'clock a.m. mark when you're getting out on the water and and getting your your tacks ready and everything. And then as we get right to race start, we'll probably see those winds start to veer a little bit more to the northwest. Uh, and that's basically because that post frontal flow right as the cold front is edging out. That's about the time I think the cold front is going to start to edge out over the coast and offshore. The winds will turn. They'll start to clock northwest and then they'll start to clock over from the north and then ultimately northeast or east northeast into the afternoon. So this is all a really big timing thing. You may just have a period where you have some west and northwest winds, which will help get you out of the harbor if, as long as they maintain some middle to upper singles. And then as you pull offshore. Uh, or get through the jetties, then you have the north northeast winds kind of coming around. So that'll, I think that could be of, of assistance for downwinding uh, for most of the race. If this all this timing works out really well, you're going to be working with clocking winds as you come out of the harbor. You're kind of going to be in line with that, running the rum line down the coast. So that's uh, definitely something to merit as far as the timing goes for right now. And I'll have more for tomorrow. But as we get into Sunday, let's go offshore. Just want to see uh, a point here as we get into Sunday. It looks like the Speeds are starting to come up just a little bit from what I saw a little while ago. So the, the models have really been up and down on this. And so we have GFS and some others. This is the Canadian really going up high. And I think Sunday morning into Sunday afternoon, we're, we have really high potential to see that 14 to 18 knot range, especially uh, closer to the coast where the gradient is going to be a little bit stronger. We might have some of those backdoor sea breeze effects where if you're getting closer to the coast, you might be just in that range where the sea breeze oscillations are cranking up. And we could even see 16 to 20 knots, honestly. Uh, this moderate gradient could build down all the way down to Tybee Island, Georgia. So if we go down to Fripp Nearshore buoy, let's just take a peek there, what it's showing for Sunday. And may, maybe some of those models are a little bit lower, but look at the, look at, notice the, the lean in the winds. So there's a lot of agreement with more of an east south or I'm sorry, east northeast. But with this kind of setup with that capping, high pressure that's, that's heading up towards the tidewater area. Sometimes we see a full easterly veer, especially closer to the coast. So it matters where you're going to be. If you're farther offshore, you may have more of an east-northeast bite or even a northeast bite, whereas you get closer to the coast, you see the winds bending and veering more easterly. So keep that in mind as you're coming back from Rockville the next day. At least it'll be a full day of wind. It just is a matter of the speeds you may start out 14 to 18 and gain some speeds as you head up towards Charleston where it finishes 15 to 19 or 16 to 20 knots and fading out by late afternoon evening so I think we're going to fade out to about 12 to 16 by the time the sun goes down and that's going to be it for this um, forecast I think uh, it's not it's not very straightforward yet there'll be more information tomorrow I'm going to see what 
the timing does for uh, the basically the um, as far as like the winds turning north. And so we'll go from there. But at least we're going to have fairly sunny weather. There may be a small chance for some showers early Saturday morning, otherwise clearing out partly cloudy on Saturday, partly cloudy on Sunday. You'll see those clouds building inland along the sea breeze oscillations, mainly on Sunday with those east-northeast winds. But pleasant weather. Um, real quick, I'll just take a quick look at the temperatures. And very pleasant, 79 degrees on Saturday, 76 on Sunday. Lows dropping into the 50s and 60s, so it'll be kind of cool in the morning. And then warming up in the afternoon. Sea surface temperatures are right around 70 degrees. And with that, I'll go ahead and sign off. Everybody, I'll see you at the Skippers meeting tomorrow night. Or um, maybe you can just tune in here if, you're not, if you can't make the Skippers meeting. But uh, either way, I'll see some of you tomorrow night. And everybody take care. Thanks for watching.